so what we're going to make today is we're going to make some cassette tape jewelry. And if you can see from this bracelet I've made, this is made out of a full-size cassette tape, and this is made out of a micro cassette tape. So we have our little micro cassette tape here, and our bigger cassette tape here. And all we're going to do is mix up the mold putty and make a cast of these two little tapes. We're also going to start off with just a cuff bracelet. This one I just covered with denim strips because it looks very retro-y as well. And this cuff, you can buy these at the jewelry stores or, you know, your big box uh, craft stores. But I actually have a discount jewelry store, a little 99 cent store. It's like a dollar store for jewelry fanatics. And I just picked up any cuff I had. This one I think had leopard print on it. And I just covered it. So this one was only a buck. And the next thing we're going to do is make a mold. Okay, so what we're going to do first is take our amazing mold putty. You want to take a good amount of this mold putty out. Two parts. Follow the directions on the label. Make sure that they're equal, about equal size. Those are about equal sizes, so then we're going to mix them together. So what I'm going to do is, I'm kind of going to make the rough shape of the cassette tape. So we're just going to take it, and make sure the tape's in there good. Works a little better if you take the tape out, but we're just going to go ahead and try it with this. Push it down in there. One thing you need to watch for is don't let these get too full uh, because it'll be hard to take your resin out. If you do it too full, we want to push our sides up. Letting this overlap a little bit in here just because it makes it easier to know when you're full when you're pouring your resin in. So at this point, we're just going to let at the this same time set. we can go ahead and mix up our putty to make a mold of this one. It's the same steps as this, and now we're going to just wait. Okay, so now is the time that we get to pop out the molds. Here's one I previously did with a cassette tape. We'll pop this one out. And here is the one we just made. Pop. Pop. And there we go. Might clean this up a little bit. A little bit of the label came off in here. Okay, so here we go. We got our two pieces. What you can do is you can measure, pour water into your two molds, pour them back into your cup, mark off how much you need to fill both molds. And then what I did is I poured it until I had it even, and then I marked what the halfway point was so I know how to do half and half of these. Go ahead and put part A and part B together. I also have some of this uh, black dye 
and it says to use between 1 and 20 drops of it. My die actually, the top came off of it, so I'm just going to use a craft stick. And you want to mix this into side A. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it into side A first, and then I will add side part B. So let's go ahead and open this up. This is my black dye. Now I'm going to add my side B. Gonna mix about a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour. And then I'll pour this one. Okay, so now we're going to take them out of their mold. They've been sitting here a while. This is still a little pliable. You can see it curving a little bit as I pull it out. This is great because I can take it and take my bracelet and curve it to match. And at this point what I do is I usually take a rubber band so it won't come unshaped. And leave it like that to dry, to harden completely. And um, if you're concerned about the imprint, the, uh, the tape rubber band will leave on the resin. You can use a re ribbon if you want. This one's still a little pliable, so I'm just going to hold it. That way when I glue it on, it'll fit perfect. So I've also done stuff where I've taken a glass and I've kind of sat it in here so it'll keep that shape. Now set this aside check this one out. You can even kind of read where it still says Sony in it. I don't know if you can see that. But it doesn't look perfect down here and that's because the cassette tape is so thin that it wrinkles up when you try to do a cast of it. And uh, so see how the little tape. So when I've made them before I took the tape out when I did this one before. But you know, I think it looks cute. It's a little distressed looking. You can go back with your X-Acto and clean up some of these edges right here. And I think this would be a cute necklace. So this will be a really cute little necklace when we finish with it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take out some 
um, just some of this rub buff. I really like using this. And I'm going to use silver, but if you wanted to use gold, you could. And I just love this look. It's so fun. Kind of distressed looking. I mean, come on, it was the 80s, so it was a long time ago. And I'm just going to, I know I'm shedding a lot of toilet paper, but it's better than getting it all over my hands. And you can rub off some if you want and see how you can kind of actually see some of the text that got embossed in that mold when we made it. You just faintly make it out in the mold. So that is so much fun. Now, as far as how are we going to attach it to a necklace, there's a couple of things you could do. But I think I'm just going to glue some jump rings onto the back of this. I could drill it. But for, um, for the sake of this, um, I could glue a bail on there as well. But I'm just going to glue some big jump rings. Get some E6000. And I'm going to put the break in the jump ring toward the bottom. Now I'm going to take a look at this and see how it's coming out. And it's pretty stiff now. I can take this apart. It still has a little bit more give, but not much. So at this point, I'm going to do uh, cover this with the um, rub buff like I did the other one. 